Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about cryptocurrency news. We're going to look at and we're going to dive a bit deeper into the $700 million liquidation on BitMEX. And we're going to look at BitMEX reaction. They say it's not their fault. But other people have a differing opinion. Data also shows that Bitcoin is still strong, it's still bullish, and has a bright future. So we're going to take a look at some of those different analytics, some of those different data points, and we'll make a decision for ourselves. All right, so let's get into this. Crypto investing ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. That's what our channel is all about. Can we get 99 likes on this video? If so, it really helps out our channel and helps the channel to grow. So do us a favor and smash that like button. It really makes a big difference. So I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Now let's get right into this. BitMEX crash triggers over $700 million in liquidations on BitMEX. So we talked about this a little bit a couple of days ago, but more information has come out, and so I wanted to take a deeper dive into it, and that's, that's why that's this, the main topic of today's video. But we are going to end it on a positive note because there is some positive information about Bitcoin and its future. So the price drop triggered $698 million worth of sell liquidations and $4 million worth of buy liquidations when the price dropped all the way down to $3,700 about a week ago, last Thursday. So a sell liquidation on BitMEX occurs when the market moves adversely against a long position or a bullish bet. Let me try and break that down a little bit better. The, the sentence helps explain things, but I think they, they kind of do it in a technical way. Here's the bottom line. On BitMEX, you can do what's called leverage trading. So you could take $1,000 and use it to buy $100,000 or sell $100,000 worth of cryptocurrency. So when you buy $100,000 worth of cryptocurrency with a $1,000 down payment, you're betting that the price is going to go up. If you sell $100,000 worth of cryptocurrency using a $1,000 down payment, your bet is that the price is going to go down. Now, if the price goes the wrong way and your initial deposit is, is wiped out, so in our case, we've only put down $1,000, as soon as that price of Bitcoin goes the wrong way so that that thousand dollars is lost based on the new price. Uh, what BitMEX does is they go and they sell your entire account and they pocket the money. They get that money as profit. And so because they're going to use that money to cover your loss. And so really when you think about it, while you can make a ton of money by using 100x leverage trading, you also can lose 100% of your investment much faster. I mean, Bitcoin has a tendency to go up by 5% and down by 5%. In fact, last week we saw it drop by 50%. And so uh, you, you had to have a very, I mean, you couldn't use 100x leverage. You had to use 2x leverage. And even then you still got liquidated. You still had your... Uh, position sold, your bet sold in order to cover the loss. And so uh, sometimes it's just not a good idea. So when you hear that $700 million was liquidated, basically what you want to think was these people had leveraged accounts. The leveraged accounts were sold in order to cover their losses. And that was a $700 million uh amount of money that was basically pocketed as profit into BitMEX's coffers. Um, but that's because they were willing to loan those people that $700 million. And the loans got called in because the losses were greater than the $700 million. The funny thing is, is that on an exchange, 
they don't necessarily actually are dealing with real money. It could be just data entries into a ledger, into a database ledger. And as soon as you're in the negative, they get to pocket all that money. And so ultimately, I think it's not a good deal for investors. So here's kind of what BitMEX, BitMEX is trying to explain why Bitcoin nearly hit zero last week and pays out $200,000. Coming at a time of intense volatility across Bitcoin markets, a botnet managed to consume hardware resources, ultimately causing BitMEX to fail altogether and go offline around half an hour. As a result, many users claim that they had lost funds via liquidations that should not have occurred. BTC USD, meanwhile, could have hit zero dollars if the vicious cycle which the attack triggered had continued, one researcher claimed. For each stop that triggered erroneously during this period, BitMEX calculated the delta to the printed index price and refunded the user. A total of 40 bitcoins was refunded. That equates to $217,000. So in other words, they pocketed $700 million, but they realized that there was a technical problem with their exchange, and so they went ahead and refunded $200,000 of the $700 million back to customers that those accounts should not have been liquidated, but did get liquidated, and they're so sorry. And so... You know, while the $200,000 is a nice gesture, it's really kind of a drop in the bucket out of the $700 million. So some of the people's Twitter responses was, ain't gonna work here, nice try though, responded a blog post on Twitter. Additional questions center on BitMEX's giant insurance fund, which only temporarily decreased in size last week before hitting fresh all-time highs of... $197 $197 million. The fund, critics argue, should have been used to stem user losses. So apparently there's an insurance fund that BitMEX has that should prevent you from losing money when you shouldn't. A lot of people are being very critical thinking that BitMEX should use that $197 million fund to help offset some of the $700 million in lost liquidations last week. Addressing the issue, Hayes also took the opportunity to deny accusations that BitMEX had deliberately crashed its own systems. So, because we don't have an inside look, all we can do is look at the information we have and come to our own opinion, but it looks like a lot of people feel strongly that BitMEX is um, engaged in foul play. So... Uh, what the given explanation seems, while the given explanation seems quite legitimate, it's worth highlighting that on Friday, BitMEX saw more liquidations during any other 24-hour period over the course of the past year. Um, and this article goes on to cover a number of different points. But here's the bottom line. I would be very, very cautious. In fact, I don't do leverage trading, and I would encourage you to be extremely cautious and probably you're better off if you don't do exchange uh, 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 leverage trading. And here's the main reason. Bitcoin cryptocurrency is so volatile, it can jump up by 10% or jump down by 10% so fast that if you're using leverage trading, you can u- lose your investment very quickly. While if you had bought the cryptocurrency outright, And my recommendation is once you own any cryptocurrency, get it off of that exchange and store it in a hardware wallet so that you have complete control over your cryptocurrency rather than leaving it in somebody else's hands. Um, And that way you have total control over it and the cryptocurrency itself would have to absolutely go to zero and stay there in order for you to lose 100% of your money. And so by doing that, you're less likely to lose 100% of your money. The only way you would lose 100% of your investment is if that cryptocurrency actually went out of existence. In other words, all of the miners or all of the nodes on the network stopped working. And that's the way you would actually lose 100% of your investment. Now, there's more details to that, but that's the simplest 
simplest way of explaining it. So anyway, as always, I'm going to put both put all of these articles in the description on the YouTube channel below. But before we get finished, we do have some good news about cryptocurrency and where the market is at. And we're going to take a quick look at four key Bitcoin metrics that show not all hope is lost for Bitcoin's price. So Bitcoin's price dropped to $3,700 for a brief period on March 12th, ending the day at $4,970. By March 13th, the price recovered from the major downtrend, ending the day at $5,563 and showing an impressive return of 11%. So the four different pieces of data that they're referring to, the first one is called the stock to flow ratio. The stock to flow ratio measures how much new Bitcoin or how much new cryptocurrency is created versus the amount of existing cryptocurrency. Stock to flow was originally created to try and measure and predict the price of, of precious metals such as gold, silver, platinum, etc. Well, they've applied it to cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in particular because Bitcoin works in a similar fashion where you have what's called miners who keep the network running and they're rewarded in cryptocurrency. And those rewards change over time. About every four years, those rewards get cut in half. That's called the halvening. And that's why the stock to flow ratio, see this, this blue area uh, that, that kind of goes sideways like this? Those blue areas that you're seeing in this graph represent the stock to flow ratio and it makes these giant jumps up because that's when a halvening occurs and the amount of Bitcoin that's mined is actually cut by 50%. And so the miners make 50% less than they did the day before. And we're rapidly, as you can see, we're almost at this upward line we're rapidly approaching the next halvening. It's going to happen sometime in the middle of May. And when it does happen, uh, the day before, Bitcoin miners get 12.5 Bitcoin for every block. And a block is created about every 10 minutes. And the next block will be at 6.25. In other words, the reward got cut by 50% from 12.5 down to 6.25. And... A quarter. and um, that will happen right at this point, and that shows, according to the stock-to-flow ratio, the scarcity of Bitcoin will go up significantly. It becomes significantly more scarce and gives a new price range. And this price range, if you could see this number, is actually hovering right around $100,000. And so the stock-to-flow ratio is actually expecting the price of Bitcoin to rise similar to these red dots. Uh, where it rose to its previous all-time high of $20,000. That's what this dot represents is the $20,000 price. And then we can see all of this price action since 2017 as it's gone up and down. Now, this is a logarithmic chart. In other words, this price down here is a penny, actually a one-hundredth of a penny, and then a penny, 10 cents. Here's a dollar. Here's $10, $100, $1,000, $10,000, and then $100,000. And so it's not your standard uh, graph uh, in terms of the way the lines are plotted. So those lines are plotted in a logarithmic fashion. Anyway, the stock to flow ratio is the first reason they feel that Bitcoin is going to go up. The next one is the Bitcoin NVT signal, and that's the network to transactions. Uh, and it's a... a, a cryptocurrency specific uh, uh, algorithm or uh, indicator and that indicator kind of indicates times to sell and times to buy um, and right now it's indicating that this is a good time to buy and then the hash rate which is the amount of computing power that miners are applying to the Bitcoin network that computing power is at an all-time high and that's also an indicator that the Bitcoin network is a, a strong and healthy network. And then the last one was the transactions that were spiked on March 12th showed a significant volume of transactions happening on the Bitcoin network. Now, as of this moment, everything is in green. This is 
uh, recorded at 7.10 Central Standard Time on March 17th, 2020. And you can see that since in the last 24 hours, Bitcoin has gone up almost 10% and hitting a $5,260 price range. And most of the other cryptocurrencies you can see here are all in the green areas. And so the current price is actually looking pretty good. And that's our video for today. So how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Did you want me to cover something in more detail? Um, whatever it is, please leave it in the comments below. Look, you know things I don't know. I know things that you don't know. And when you share your polite disagreements in the comment section below, we're going to learn from each other. I'm going to learn from you. You're going to learn from me. And we'll both grow smarter together. Look, I want to grow smarter together with you. So feel free to leave your polite disagreements in the comment section below. In the meantime, like, subscribe, and hodl. I hope that you have a fantastic day.